Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Magic is Real. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm Shannon, and I am a psychic medium. And today I have with me another medium named Amber Kasich. I'm going to read her bio for you. Amber Kasich is an evidential medium, author, speaker, former classroom teacher, and U.S. Department of Education Fulbright participant. After a shared death experience with her father in 2020, she began a journey of discovery and connection with our greater reality, guided by her dad and spirit. She shares her journey and transformational stories of love and guidance from spirit with audiences worldwide, and is co-author of the book, Life Reimagined, Women's Stories of Hope, Resilience, and Transformation. She now inspires others to explore just what is possible in our lives, as love is limitless, and we are so much more than just human. It's nature's way. Amber, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me here and to share your shared death experience story and ex spiritual journey with my audience. Well, thank you. These are my favorite things to talk about, and it's always a great way to end the day, so I appreciate the time. Me too. All right, Amber, I would love to start by asking you about your background. What were your spiritual beliefs growing up as it pertains to your spiritual journey? Anything you'd like to share about who you are as a human and how this all came about for you? Sure. Well, uh, I think like most of us, we all have our spiritual journeys that evolve and change throughout our lives. Uh, I grew up in just a, a typical background of going to, to church every week, um, especially throughout my early childhood, uh, and having a faith for sure. Um, but there was also times in my life where I think I was, like many of us do, not so much questioning the what, but questioning the how and quite having those deeper questions. Uh, I also traveled a lot in my early adulthood, spent time living in Spain, spent time living in Chile. I've always been one who is very drawn to uh, human differences and understanding how we are the same, but also have such our own cultural perceptions and practices. It's just, that is something that's been fascinating to me since I was a child. So that probably says something about my soul uh, and I think as I spent time internationally, especially some extended time, I started to understand how there is a humanness that we all share beyond all the stuff, beyond just the ideas we have, the beliefs we have. There's something that felt more universal and connected to me. And so that started opening up questions for me. Um, and probably started to also grow a spiritual path. And I would also say that as I got older, uh, especially as I became a mom, wow, did that raise my intuition by a lot. It was like a intuition supercharge <laughs> having, having become a mom. Uh, and then in 2020, when my dad was passing away from cancer, I had a shared death experience with him. Before I go into that though, I would add, because I think it's important for viewers, I have had little moments of spiritual experiences throughout my life, but a part of my brain just dismissed them. And it only was once I had this shared death experience where I could not deny and it was so in my face and so many wows of all the things that were happening that I began to look back and go, oh, that's what that was. Oh, that was someone kind of intervening here. Um, and I think many of us have those, but we, it's like there's a little cloud. A part of us recognizes it, but we don't, we don't let it really set in. Um, and so I would ask your viewers to think about that for themselves. What experiences have you had that maybe you're just not trusting? That was actually going to be my next question to you. You yeah. answered it. You anticipated it. Um, and I appreciate you bringing that up because that's been my experience. I think we're all mediumistic, psychic, and you are an evidential medium and I'm an evidential medium. But we have these things that we can now look back on and go, oh, that was a spiritual experience. And yeah. I dismissed it. So I love that you asked that question. Yes, absolutely. I like to say that 
our experiences are dictated by our biology, it doesn't mean that that's all there is. Mm -hmm. For sure. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. That's be beautifully stated. All right. So yeah. Um, Let's go into the shared death experience. I know not everyone knows what that is. I've had a few people share their stories on this podcast, but you I've heard you describe it beautifully. So I'll let you take it away. Well, I had no idea what a shared death experience was. I had no I had never heard of that term until a year after my shared death experience. And once again, I was so grateful to find that work uh, by William Peters and Shared Crossing Project because it gave me, not only did it validate my experiences, but for some reason having that language was just so important to me. As my dad was passing away from cancer, um, I, you know, he had been unconscious for a few days already. And so I'd already had my last conversation with him. Uh, we had a couple of beautiful closing moments. He was uh, passing in, in just my parents' home um, under hospice care. And it was the middle of an afternoon and I was lying next to him, holding his hand. Uh, and I think just sat in a place of immense pain because I knew in that moment, I'll never hear my dad's voice again. And then I was thinking of all these future things that would never happen. And then I was thinking of all the past things, things that were maybe between him and I, a little left unsettled, you know, all those normal thoughts that we have when someone's passing. And so there was no past to go back to, but there's no future to go forward with either. And yet he's still here. And almost to escape that pain, not by choice, but to escape it, I just became fully present and focused on unconditional love. Because in that moment, he was still my dad. In that moment, he was still here. In that moment, I could still hold his hand. And so that's, that's I think, what I began to focus on. And in that moment of full presence and unconditional love, I describe, uh, I experience what I describe as not of me. I suddenly saw swirls of purple, hum uh, kind of swirling in my mind's vision. And then I felt a warmth encompass me from head to toe. And I remember thinking, oh, that must just be the sun coming in from the window and, you know, kind of playing tricks on me. But then with full clarity, I felt an energy. And that's not a word. I didn't use words like that before, but it was the only word that I could use to describe. I felt an energy like a whoosh come in my back. I knew it was coming in from my back. And it went, I felt all this energy right here, came in my back to my heart center, again, a word I never used before, and paused. And in that moment, I had no time to judge what I was experiencing. This was so new. I couldn't say, oh, this is real. This is not real. It was something unlike anything else I have ever felt or encountered. And that energy in, in the center of my chest here started swirling in slow circles and the inside of my body is what that felt like. And then it went to my shoulder and it paused. And then it went down my arm, almost like imagine a lightning bug on the inside of your body into my hand. And then I just knew with total certainty that that same energy, that feeling went into my dad. I gave him a hug. And I said, dad, I don't know what that was, but I know you felt it too. And you take all that love and light. Again, words I didn't use before. So I, where did this come from? You take all that love and light with you in your core and leave the old news behind. What was really wrapped up in that statement was a verbal statement of forgiveness, wanting him to leave the old news behind wanting him to pass in a place of soul peace, take all that love and light in your core with you. And somewhere in me, those words I think reflect now looking back, all of us, when we, when we get rid of all the stuff, the junk, the things that make us human, our past experiences, the hurts, all those things, when we get rid of those, we are whole at the soul level. 
we are that love and light in our purity. And so take all that love and light with you and leave the old news behind. And I just somehow knew, I knew it like the sky is blue. I don't know how, it's just I knew we are eternally bonded. I had no idea what that meant. I had no context. I just knew we're eternally bonded and I was at complete peace. In a weird way, you could almost say I was in a weird way, kind of joyful. I had this odd joy that was with me. Uh, my dad actually passed 12 hours after that as far as taking his last breath. But I now know for sure through evidential experiences and mediumship, through through other other stories, our souls sometimes leave our bodies before our physical body actually takes that last breath. It is my belief that that was my dad letting me know we are eternally bonded, our tart. Me, down my arm, to him, into my hand. That was him letting me know I'm here. And he was about to take me on a journey that I didn't even know I signed up for or was about to go on. Yeah, a hundred percent. That comes through to me all the time that the soul left the body, even though the heart was still beating. The the soul was, it can be in two places at once. So it's sort of in, it is in the body still. It can still, and the soul hears the things that you tell them while they're, they're unconscious, but they're already in this blissful state on the other side, which is so beautiful. Uh, and I hope comforting because sometimes when people pass over, it can look very distressing um, to people that are witnessing their loved one crossing over. And there will be physical manifestations of life leaving the body. But I understand that they're not suffering in that moment, even though it looks like it to you. So I think that's important to remember. Um, I obviously want to ask you, um, you know, when you started to put all the pieces together and understand that you were a medium. But I just also wanted to, before I forget, have you explain when we talk about evidential mediumship, that's what I describe myself as also as an evidential medium. What does that mean? Why do we, why do we use that term? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, an evidential medium is someone who provides verifiable evidence that is coming from a, an individual in spirit as verified by the client in the session. Uh, and those things can include manner of passing, age, hobbies, uh, profession, uh, fun memories, yeah. things that, that are specific to you and the loved one. Uh, so fun memories is a very special way for them to verify that. Also current events in a client's life. Uh, I find usually that, especially now, right now, for whatever reason in my mediumship, it's no longer me expecting right off the bat these four to five things of laund laundry list. I, I want personality. I want to feel that right away because that's very important to me to be able to feel the loved one's personality and describe how they showed up in life. Um, but I also find that Spirit likes to tell their story in the way that they want to tell it. And often that in and of itself, the things that they choose to share for evidence is meaningful to the message in the session, oftentimes. So I've noticed this change. And maybe since I've become more comfortable with the unknown, every session is so different. In some ways, it's the hardest part. I never quite know what to expect. Um, but instead of just, you know, it's not a person who's here in the ear saying, well, this is who I was. And in and, and these five things, it's more of this beautiful exchange between meaningful evidence that pertains to them and how that complements you and your interaction with them in life. And so the evidential piece is important, but there's also that piece of allowing the person in spirit to provide that flow to the session to best benefit the client. Mm, I love that you said that because I always say, just know I don't have control over what they say or what kind of evidence they bring or why. Just trust that this is what they, how they're choosing to express themselves. And 
I think you'll agree that if some soul tells me, you know, like, oh, that's my daughter. I love her. Well, that's too generic for me because I can assume that every soul, even if they weren't a great parent, loves their child. So um, maybe they didn't show it or feel it in this body, but like the soul always is going to love their child. So I need a piece of evidence. So one example, and I'd love to hear yours, a grandmother said, I love you. And I was like, you got to give me more than that. And she said, lace tablecloth. And I saw it. And I said that to the girl. She said, that's the one thing I have of hers is her lace tablecloth. So it's like, I love you and I can prove it's me because I'm going to give you a piece of evidence. I'd love to hear your examples or or thoughts sure. about that. Yeah. Well, there's so many. Uh, maybe to wrap it in with a little story of yeah. when did I decide, when, when did I say, okay, yes. I'm a medium and I have to accept this. Uh, And for me, because this whole evidential mediumship was a journey for me and not one that I said, I want to become an evidential medium or I want to learn how to speak to my dad. My dad was communicating with me in such unique and I would say mind-blowing ways that over time I couldn't dismiss it. Yes. And therefore, my next question became, how is this happening? I believe in miracles. I believe in faith. I also believe in science. How is this happening? And I'm not so much more special than anyone else that for some reason I should be hearing these messages and not other people, that that kind of thing. It didn't make sense to me. So why me and how is this happening? And so it began a journey to me, actually out of serendipity, my mom who knew nothing of my communication with my dad or the evidence that he was providing, I was too afraid to tell her. One day shared with me a video uh, from now my favorite spiritual te- spiritual teacher, Suzanne Giesman and medium. She's Chip- mine too. She's my favorite too. Yeah. And she sent me a video of hers. My mom did and just said, for some reason, I just think you would find this interesting. And I watched this one hour wow. talk and I said, that's what's happening to me. And I need to take this class because it's going to help me understand what the heck is going on. Yes. And for context, she lost, she found out she was a medium because she lost her stepdaughter, but her daughter and began, and then wanted to connect with her and started to receive messages from her. And that's what led her into this work. Yes. Tell me how soon after his passing, did you start to receive information? And then of course, share whatever you'd like to, but I, I am so curious about how yeah. the information was coming through and how soon after, and when you started to go, this is really my dad. Right. Well, it was happening right away, including oh, wow. um, just hours after his passing, uh, where I went for a walk. And as I pulled into the parking lot, it wasn't so much that I was in grief, I actually grieved for the two years before my dad passed. Plus, I had had that beautiful experience. So in one way, I was just at such a place of peace. But I was exhausted, mentally, emotionally exhausted from the week. And I was in the car, and I just finally let out some tears of that exhaustion. And I heard his actual voice in my mind. And his voice said, get out of the car, Ambi. That's what he always called me. You've cried enough tears over me in your life. And I thought, why, that's interesting. I have cried enough tears over my dad in my life. We had a great relationship, but we also had some tough stuff. Um, And of course, you know, I just thought I was like inventing that voice. (laughs) But I got out of the car and I started walking. And I said to myself, gee, dad, I hope you're all right. And without a second of hesitation, I heard his voice in my mind again. And his actual voice said, I'm just fine, Ambi. I'm going to stick around here a while and help some people. And I'm happy about it. And I stopped walking because in that moment, I knew I would not have said that. I, as Amber, if I were making this up, would have said, have been so beautiful. I'm with my mom and dad. Our dogs, Thunder and Bailey, are here. And I, you know, I get to see them and they love you. (laughs) That's what I would have said if I were making this up. I could have not even come up with, I'm going to stick around here a while and help some people. And I'm happy about it. And the next thought I had was, well, who would he be helping? 
I did not even think he would be helping me. Oh. It just like didn't even occur to me. And that in and of itself can tell, tells me so much about this beautiful experience. Not only was it because I was probably meant to become a medium as a part of my soul path, but also it provided my dad maybe an opportunity to help heal some things for me from our relationship and our history. And so that whole first year was this dual process of personal healing and transformation, understanding the greater reality. And then eventually I said, I am a medium and I have to accept this because things were happening with him began like many of us do with little signs and, you know, just physical things that don't make any sense. But then his voice was returning and he was telling me things as a very quick example. One day I'm in the middle of work and I feel his presence and I hear his voice and he says, call mom. She's so sad right now and eating pudding. Oh, I'm wow. I mom eat pudding since I was a kid. Wow. And so I did. And she was eating pudding and she was crying very hard because she was trying to fix something in the house that normally my dad would. Mm. It wasn't going well. And she was just having that encompassing grief. And so I had all these moments where he was showing up and giving me evidence that I couldn't deny like that. How can I deny that she's eating pudding and crying in the exact moment when he told me to call her in his own voice because she's eating pudding and crying. Did you ask her? I'm just curious. Did you ask her, are you eating pudding right now? I did. And was she like, how how did you know that? Conversation. Yeah. And what, how did she receive that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, well, she said, yes, I am eating pudding and I'm so upset. Yeah. No. And then asked me, why did you ask me that? Oh, why did she, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, of course I told her, you know, and by then I had begun to tell her things. So it was some months before I did, but by then I had, but it was still for me in that journey of working to believe that all of this was really true, but I became a medium. I say an evidential medium one year after his passing, my mom and I, and my family went to spread his ashes behind a house that we lived in when I was growing up. It was in the woods, lots of acres in the back. You know, it's his favorite place. One of my fondest memories is him walking with all the neighborhood dogs on the trails. They would just follow him behind the house. And I pa I stopped to, to, to ask the man who's living there now if it was okay. If we, you know, took a moment to spread the ashes behind the house. And yes, that was fine with him. Well, the next morning, by then I was doing little morning five-minute meditations in my meditation, all of a sudden I felt a male presence and a female presence. And somehow I just knew this is that man in the house. Uh, this is his mother and this is his brother. And then alternatively, they were giving me little pieces of information. The brother helping me physically feel pain in my side like he had to give himself injections. So I'm writing this all down. Um, mother telling me that she, she showed me in my mind uh, like a kitchen pot holder with a green and yellow flower on it. And and I knew it was something about, um, it had been passed down in their family and it was very special. So I'm writing all of this down. And when they sort of, their presence left me, I thought to myself, this man is going to think I am utterly insane. I I can't just go up to his house and say, hey, <laughs> Uh, do you have a mother and a brother who have passed? And I think they would like to talk to you. It's just, it's not my style. And at that point, I, I wasn't, you know, trying to go up to everybody on the street and say, hey, I hear this or hey, I hear that. But yet somehow I just knew I was supposed to. And as I pulled back into that driveway, I had it all written down on paper. And I'm thinking, how, I just don't know how this is going to go. But I knew for some reason I had to do this. I looked at all of his political flags he had all over the house, and I thought, this is going to be the least woo-woo person yeah. <laughs> that could possibly be. And I got up the courage, and I knocked on the door, and I decided I'm not going to lie to him. I'm going to tell him, you know, I've had these experiences since my dad passed, and I had this experience this morning, and here's this paper, and 
would you like to see this? And I felt was the ethical way to go about it, to give, give him the opportunity to say no if he didn't want to hear it. And as I, as I was speaking to him, um, to make small talk, I asked him, I saw a little grave marker in the yard. I just assumed oh, that's probably from a dog. Yeah. I said, hey, uh, do you know this? I had a dog that passed. And, you know, we had a dog that lived here too. And he looked at me and he gave me this, this kind of smile. And the smile was, should I really tell her? That was what his face said to me. Yeah. And then I must have felt safe to him. And he said, you know, that's actually a hummingbird marker. My brother loved hummingbirds and one flew into the window one day and he wanted to bury it. So maybe he felt as an older man, that's a silly thing to share. But as he shared it, I looked down my paper and I had written down special box with a bird inside. And in that moment, I knew it is safe to tell this man this and it is safe to give him this paper. So I did. And he looked at it and he read it all. And he said, hold on just a minute. And he went in the house. He was gone for a few minutes. He came out. He said, I had to go in the basement and dig through three boxes. And here is my mom's special kitten pot, hold, pot holder, kitchen pot holder, with a green and yellow flower print on it. And her dad handmade that for her, passed it down in the family. And it was always one that was only allowed to be hung up and never used. There is no way you could have known about that. And he called me a week later and said to me, why? We exchanged numbers. Yeah. And he said to me, why did this happen to me? And I love this question because I had been asking myself, why is this happening to me? Yeah. And by then I knew the answer, because you are worthy. You are worthy of the connection with your loved one. You are worthy to hear from them. I love you. You are worthy to hear from them. I'm sorry. You are worthy to hear from them. Their why of what caused you pain. You are worthy of hearing that they are well and they love you. You are worthy of hearing their joy and fond memories. You are worthy. That's what I told him. And all of us are worthy. That's been a part of my journey of learning. And on that day, I said to myself, I am a medium and I have to accept it. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you for, that's an incredible story about how you're in the right time at the right place. And, uh, and also I think there's something to, as mediums were, I mean, we're taught, but it, it that it's also sort of unethical to walk around just dumping what we get onto people because they may not be willing to receive it. But spirit usually won't show you the information. They know. And then you ask, are you open to this? I had this similar experience a few weeks ago. I went into a bike shop. I'm doing promotions for a music festival. And I suddenly felt spirit there. I started to get my whole body was electric. And I said to the woman at the desk, are you spiritual? She said, yeah. I said, okay, because I'm, I'm a medium and there is a spirit here that feels very, very strongly like they need to speak. And I said, I have this feeling that someone lost a child. She said, yep, some someone did. I said, I'm being very drawn to that guy over there. And she said, yeah. And I said, I'm hearing Jonathan. She goes, well, his name is Johnny. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, and she said, yeah, he did lose a baby. So I'm like, what do I do? I said, do I go up to him? And this is like, you know, you lose a child. I don't want to interrupt him at work and cause him to have like a breakdown. And she's like, no, I feel like you can tell him that. And she said, I know him. And so I just gently went up to him and said, if this isn't the time, we can do, I'll call you or something, but I just want to let you know that your baby is safe and at peace. He came to me. He's very adamant. I, he told me he has a brother. He's like, yeah. So the, he was so open to it. And I felt like, you know, I don't think the baby would come through to me if it wasn't something that I needed to say. And if the baby didn't know that his dad really did need to hear from him and that and would be receptive to it. Yes, that is. I love that. I love that. And it shows us that we're not always in control. Uh, I mean, not, never. It happens. Control. Some of my readings I've done outside of sessions are better and stronger than the ones that I people sign up for. Yeah. Because sometimes people will um, book a session just out of curiosity. I've done that. Yeah. 
And yep. it's there's not a lot there because they don't have a strong need or a strong need to hear a connection with a loved one. But so if the, if a spirit needs to give a message, they will absolutely make themselves known. Mm -hmm. And I will feel. How do you receive that? Like if you're just living your life, how do you know when re when spirit is ready to speak? I know you just described an example of it, but what's sort of their mo as far as sure yeah experienced? Well, it happened to me a lot more in the first year. Yeah, uh, where I'm just out in public and experience things. But I think, again, showing us uh, we're not always in control. It needed to be that way because I wasn't trying to become a medium. Yeah, it was presenting itself to me. And the only way for me to discover that I wasn't making this up was by verifying when I would hear something mm -hmm. with someone around me. <laughs> I'm hearing this. Is this true? Um, and so now it's not like that. I don't go around and I'm constantly connected and hearing Me things, neither. but, um, I do sometimes strategically, well, I, I can get a pressure in my ear and that causes me to pause and go like this and I'll just take a deep breath and I'll close my eyes for a second. And, and I just have my own little set your amber stuff aside and just be present. And then I can, you know, feel what, what's here and why is someone trying to come through and express something. So that does happen to me occasionally. Uh, also, sometimes, in a, again, a few times a year, maybe in a meditation, I experience a random presence that I'm unaware of, and I'll mm -hmm. just write down everything. Uh, this happened at the International Association of Near-Death Studies Conference. Five days before I was at that conference, I experienced this presence. I wrote down everything, details, quotes from him, age of passing, lots of things. And then I was speaking with someone at a conference. I just was drawn to her, wanted to hear more about her life story. She was very much a global traveler, and that's an interest that I've had. So I'm talking to her, and she makes one comment. And that one comment it was exactly with one thing that I wrote on that paper. So I pulled out the paper and said, Linda, does this match your husband? Yeah. And she looks and yes, every single thing uh, spoke of her husband. And she was someone that, you know, I didn't even know existed until I happened to meet her at this conference. So sometimes those in spirit, they know they where know. we're headed. They yep. know it's in our immediate future. And they knew she had said to me, I'm really struggling. I'm glad I'm at this conference, but I'm really in deep grief and I'm having a hard time focusing. He wanted to get that message to her. He wanted her to know that she's not alone. None of us are alone, even when it's unrecognizable to your own personal heart. You are not alone. That is so beautiful because I think in this world, it's we. I don't know if it's everyone, I assume. I know that I've always had this deep loneliness within me, which is why I have such a strong need for connection with others. Like I love to connect with people. It's why I do a podcast. And yet I came from a loving family and it's not like, and I have so many friends more than I can even keep up with, but there's always this inherent, and I like being alone and I'm very independent and I travel alone joyfully, but there's always this inner loneliness. And I think that's so important to address because, and I'd love to hear you speak about it, that we're not alone. We might feel like that separation, but there's no separation between us and the spirit world. Whatever you'd like to sort of share about that, it would be great. I don't have a particular question as much as what do you know about that or what 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 comes up for you when I when I speak about that? Well, it's a really powerful sentence and, and thing to elaborate on. Um, it's a big part of my healing journey for sure. Not so much necessarily, well, maybe like you, there was some sense of this internal sense of isolation that I that I maybe have felt for a very long time. Uh, again, I have a loving family, have a wonderful husband, wonderful mother, wonderful son. Um, so, and yes, I've had difficult, very difficult things in life too, but I don't know. Sometimes I think with societal belief systems we're raised in, sometimes they can be part of an underlying religious message that we sometimes hear, which is at the end of the day, 
we're not worthy until we prove we're worthy. Mm -hmm. What I have learned from this journey is you are love itself. You are worth itself already. As you are at the soul level. It's all this other human stuff that gets in the way. Yeah. And so when we are walking through life with this underlying sense of loneliness, isolation, or not unworthiness, it would be a part of my mission to change that message because you are worthy already. You are already whole, already divine, already worthy. That's number one. And believing that and knowing that and finding your own personal experience to help you feel that. But also, if we're walking around with that, it can kind of cover up this connection that is innate that we have, I think, is kind of my thought about it. So I, I know sometimes people feel, I don't get signs from my loved ones. Why am I not getting signs and things like that? I don't have all the answers. What I know is that no one person is more worthy of experiencing connection with their loved ones than anyone else. Now, for me, probably because of my soul path to become a medium, I had to have these experiences that maybe are on one high end of the spectrum. But all of us are innately divine, innately worthy, innately loved, innately whole, just like our loved ones are. So I like to simply say, what are the clouds that are getting in the way of your own personal acknowledgement of what might be coming to you that your brain is just not seeing or dismissing? Mm -hmm. And if we're feeling isolated and unworthy and we're feeling disconnected from life, that may be a barrier to experiencing yeah. that connection yourself. I love that you spoke about that because this morning I actually wrote something. I don't want to say it's channeled because who knows if it is, but it. I wanted to, I'm turning it into a, like a post later. Um, and it was exactly that of who were you before you were told that you had to prove your worth? Who were you before? It's, that's kind of the theme of it. And it's that. being reinforced in what you're saying. So I feel like maybe it was a channeled message well, that I'm I needed to chills. share. I am too. I just got, <laughs> I got, I got, I'm getting chills all over my body yeah, right now. So, so it's, to share that. it's, I, I got uh, spirits here right now. I can feel it. And so they're like, yes, girl, we put that in your head to share. Um, and so and then you just reinforced it. So it's 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 really an important message. I have two questions in my head at the same time. So I'm going to take one at a time. One is, since your father has passed, how does he show up in your life now? Like day to day, has was it sort of like intense messages at first and then he knew she's good, she'll be okay on her own and he kind of backed off? Or do you have like this regular kind of interaction with him? Yeah, in the first year, every day, yeah. basically just about every day. And it had to be. It took me so long. And in stages, it's like integrating the belief in my internal system over time. It was about two months before I said, okay, like the little girl in Miracle on 34th on yeah. Street. I believe, I believe, I believe. You know, that took me months to get to that point. And then it would just become this ever increasing thing. I was always cycling through different ways of believing. But in that first year, in some level, almost every day, I would experience a type of connection with him. And I love that you asked this because it just, it makes my, it lifts my heart to have this little memory I haven't thought about in a while. Almost a year after his passing, I was driving home from a family vacation and just, you know, thinking about what a great time this was, thinking about little connections I had with my dad during the trip. Um, and all of a sudden I said to myself, he's really with me, connected to me always. And it's like my, a part of me, just 1000% finally believe that. Yeah. No matter, it doesn't matter if I don't hear from him constantly. He is here with me always. And he's not going anywhere. And, and I really, in my heart of being, believed that. 
And with that very thought, I felt a whoosh and a release. And it's not that I think he was exiting. These right. are very human words to describe probably what's happening energetically. But remember when he said, I'm going to stick around here a while and help some people. And I'm happy about it. I believe he was needing to have his awareness more closely, densely, energetically focused on I don't you know, and your mom realm and physical yeah. space. So that I would be feeling him all the time, hearing him all the time. I believe that he wanted me to somehow know as a part of healing how much he really loved me. And again, that we are eternally bonded. And those lessons of worthiness that I described that I needed to learn for myself. And once I finally knew all that, once I finally knew he really is here with me all the time that whoosh there was that release and I smiled because it didn't matter that I and I didn't hear from him for the whole next week and I smiled through it all because I knew it doesn't matter if I'm not hearing from him he is with me always yes it yes they can be omnipresent which is hard to understand like yeah and I've learned just because we don't notice them doesn't mean they're not here. That's exactly yeah. right. I yeah, think I've like you said, experiences even. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you, you said earlier that people are like, why am I not getting signs? I tell them you are, you probably just don't realize it because people think mediumship is like, oh, you're going to see. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of underwhelming how easy it is. It's, um, if back in the day when I heard of mediums, I was like, oh my God, it must be so cool. And like, And it is. It's amazing. But it's like it's not as dramatic as like it's a thought that you're probably just not even paying attention to. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. One thousand percent. Not all your thoughts are your own. Mm -hmm. A thousand percent. They feel like your own thoughts. I say that all the time. I'm like those thoughts that you pay attention to them. And now don't you always do that now? I feel like I'm in a constant state of talking to someone and also paying attention to the subconscious thoughts at the same time in case there's a message there. I'm constantly tuned in. Um, Not constantly, but, you know, like I'm more aware now of, oh, where did that thought come from? And I love that you shared that because that is the path for everybody. What you just said, using that word aware, you're you a part of you becomes aware of internal things happening with you. I did not go through my whole life like that. This process helped me start to have this sort of discernment and separation. It's like noticing your own thoughts and noticing them from a different place. Also noticing your internal body, right? Noticing feelings, noticing your body's kind of like a guidepost. Um, And I say that because I think people often think of mediumship as, oh, someone sprinkled magic dust on you, all right? Mm -hmm. Or you were zapped by a powerful being with this ability. No, yes, maybe some of us, that's a part of our life path. Not everyone is supposed to be a medium serving others. Everyone can access the part of you that is already innate, your spiritual connected self, everyone. Because that's our birthright. And what you just said, starting to be aware of yourself as yourself is a part exactly. of that. I always tell people it's literally, I also call myself a spirit translator because I tell every client in the beginning of our reading, you're a medium too. The only difference between you and me is that I'm trained to recognize the difference between my own thoughts and spirit thoughts. And sometimes I mix them up and sometimes I'm not right because I'm like, uh, I can't quite tell and you'll help me discern. But I said, I always tell them you can do this too. I've just practiced it a lot more. And all I've done is I love the word noticing. It's just, it's there. You just have to notice it and don't beat yourself up if you can't right away. It takes practice and And, uh, and bouncing it it off people. Yeah. Yeah. And learning what it means and how it feels to become truly present is important. Yeah. To, To the noticing. Yeah. My other question I was going to ask you and I'm asking you is, what 
I've I heard you speak on this on a on another uh, interview about what is it that spirit wants us to know mainly like what are the main themes what what when spirit why do they need to deliver messages through us for healing thank you for asking that of course that you are loved first and foremost that all is well that all of us are well even when our lives may feel challenging or in disarray at the soul level all is well secondarily what i notice um <clears throat> in most of my mediumship sessions. You know, all of us in our, because we're human, we're in interpersonal relationships. So there's always gonna be moments of harm, some big harm, some small harm. Um, and I find that people, those in spirit often want to explain why they behaved a certain way, because that why heals in some aspect or way, the person coming for the session. So for example, uh, a few weeks ago, I had a mother in spirit who helped me see her daughter, the client in my session, did dance when she was little, but didn't just do it when she was little, like it carried through high school and she went on with it. And yes, she had. And, um, and, and right before that, the mom helped me feel about her daughter. She's a perfectionist. She very much needs everything to be all perfect. The daughter verified, yes, that was true. Then the mom went into this story about dance. To me, it seems like it's not connected. It's just a new thing, right? But you start to notice as a medium when there's a thread, mm. something is connecting to something else. And as the mom was sharing about her daughter's dance journey, she shared with me uh, that she kind of treated her daughter's dance talent sort of frivolously didn't really take it seriously she liked going to her recitals and performances and all that stuff but didn't really invest in it as a serious talent it was more of just this thing she did and then the mom helped me feel that's the cause of her perfectionism because her daughter wasn't feeling like she was ever pleasing her mom. She wasn't getting the type of validation she wanted from those experiences as she was hearing. And the reason is because the mom didn't treat it necessarily as this real actual talent the daughter had. It was more of just a hobby, right? And the that was so acknowledging for the daughter, not that the daughter, you know, has her life with some massive conflict because of that but it affects her how many of us can think of things that we do as adults that come from all kinds of stuff things that happen to us as children you know from our parents from our peers um these things affect us and when you hear someone's why it can release that effect it has that potential especially if you're willing to release it with that why as a client uh, and I, I find that people in spirit want to provide that why generally. That makes Just, perfect sense. Yeah. So, yeah. And I've noticed that spirit doesn't waste energy on insignificant details. So like you said, you might think, okay, that while you're going, okay, you're a perfectionist. Go. I don't know why that's important. Uh, and then it's like, okay, I'm seeing this dance trajectory. And then you as the medium start to put the pieces together okay, I'm seeing the theme. Because this happened, this was the effect, and they're acknowledging. I sometimes hesitate to use the word apology, but there's acknowledgement. Someone will tell me I was kind of a cold, stern person. Okay, that they're describing themselves, but they're telling me that because they want to acknowledge, hey, I could have been warmer. I'm, you know, I, I don't say I'm sorry unless I hear I'm sorry, but I'll say your dad is telling me that he wasn't very emotional and he was a little bit withdrawn and he was kind of cold. And I can feel that, that he's saying that for a reason. I can feel that he's yeah. acknowledging that I could have been warmer and I wish that I had not been so reserved. Yes. I love that you described it that way. Sometimes I hear direct apologies, yeah. but as mediums, and this is something that's been on my mind lately. So I love that you just described it that way. It's important that, that we not only are, are like getting the images and listening to things, but we're also paying attention to our bodies and how that feels because people in spirit will provide you with the image 
and the knowing, and then they may give you an emotion behind that. So I may not hear, I'm sorry, but I may feel I could have done this a different way or that warmth, like you said, I, I feel how I should have been more warm because those in spirit see how their qualities impacted their loved ones on earth. As we will one day see how our qualities innately impacted our loved ones on earth. Uh, all of us have, have those things, you know, we learn by doing this with each other sometimes. Yeah. Um, and talk to me about you, you had mentioned to me before we started recording about a leap session, and I'm just going to let you talk about that. Yeah. It's a great question to piggyback off of this. Um, because I, it's been on my mind in the last month. Not so much what is the purpose of mediumship. The purpose of mediumship is to experience that connection with your loved one, some healing, hopefully, uh, and that knowing that all is well. Every session should be meaningful and help someone with their next step. I find that almost all sessions, someone in spirit wants to help their loved one with a next step. And then there are what I call leap sessions. And not every session is a leap session. And that's okay, as long as they're all helpful and meaningful. But leap sessions are when the client is really ready at a soul level for a big next step, hearing something that really needs to be released from their loved one in spirit. Um, it's almost like, you know, the stars all aligning. There's a real need. You're maybe holding on to something that you're not meant to hold on to and learn from. That's another one. It's not part of your soul lessons. So why are you holding on to this kind of a thing? And spirit will show up and wow, will they deliver. They will deliver everything with exactly how it needs to be heard from you, how you would want it to be heard as the client. It's like, you know, again, we're not always in control. I call those leap sessions because they're meant to leap you forward as a client because you are ready to leap. And spirit is saying, stop holding on to this. I don't want you to hold on to this anymore. Why are you holding on to this? This is not part of your path. So let's go leap. And those sessions can be so healing that, you know, when someone leaves, they, they feel healed. They'll write, thank you for being a conduit of this major shift in my life. I needed that one hour and they're on a whole new trajectory. That is beautiful. Not every session is that way, but it's okay. Every session should be helpful and meaningful for your next step as guided by spirit. I That's love that. I decided yeah. to differentiate, you know, because we're human. We want every session to be a leap session. Oh, yeah. Right. But there's always the next step for you. Sometimes it's going to be a leap. Sometimes it's just a heartfelt, loving, helpful next step of growth. That's beautiful. I, I think... We all, I think that so much of mediumship is intention, and I don't know if you do this, I assume. Before every session, I do a little prayer, and I ask, may all of these messages be in Amber's highest and best good and in the highest and best good of the spirit world. And I love that added quality of the leap because we were talking about how sometimes, I mean, sometimes these messages that come through are so powerful, and I leave going, man, that was amazing, and I can't stop glowing and I'm just feeling so excited because wow I now am more of a I, I'm this is validating for me to know that I, this is real and then sometimes people come out of curiosity where they're like I don't know I just want to see what's there and it's more it's more difficult to get information because the need isn't so powerful and this person isn't in deep grief and they don't need deep healing but then later like you said things come through. Like I had one yesterday where I was like, man, that was kind of like pulling teeth. And I just said to her, do you not really have like a strong knee? She's like, no, I'm just curious kind of thing. But then 
I start to go, well, what if, and she couldn't validate a lot of things because it was all to do with her, for her mother or for, so I'm going, I mean, I don't know if I was really that strongly connected and I don't feel that like, wow. And today she texted me this morning and was like, well, I confirmed this, this, and this with my husband at that you, cause she was like, no, no, I don't think that's right. And she said, but I just confirmed it all. Go ahead. There's something really important about this. Cause yes, I've experienced that too. That same yeah. thing. And, and it, it like, you know, we're human and we've got our ego still. So I know. It, it bugs us. Like, why is it that? Yes. <laughs> yes. But this is what I think. Maybe a part of the point sometimes when that, especially when they're, when someone is showing up for curiosity, I just, I'm, I'm interested in the experience. They may not be ready for this mind blowing thing. And that doesn't even sometimes make sense to us. Well, what do yes. you mean you're ready for that? Why wouldn't you just, why wouldn't spirit just give me the mind blowing thing? Yeah. Maybe a part of the point is the journey of the spiritual experience and growth. In which case you need those breadcrumbs because the breadcrumbs take you to the next thing or opening your mind up a little bit or, you know, just increasing a sense of curiosity. Should they always be evidential? Yes. If I have a session for someone and it does happen every once in a while and there's no evidence here that makes sense to them, we call that reading off because I have mm -hmm. no business doing anything that's not in full integrity. Yeah. And my full integrity is, is this helpful and meaningful for you and evidential? If it takes you to a next step of some kind, then I know I've done my job well. But sometimes... Not everyone is ready for the leap. They need the next little thing. Sometimes those in spirit need to just give you the next little thing before they really give you that massive apology that you really need. Because they first, they see more of our soul growth than we do. Right. My dad said that to me in spirit. I understand you better than you understand yourself now. I'll never oh. forget when he said that to me. And I have no judgment because he knows everything about me. I have no judgment. I know you better than you know yourself. They can see our path and see our souls and see where we're at. And sometimes they may give you just enough to bring you to a new little place or thought. And then with that, you move forward in some way. And then they can deliver again. So there's that. There's that too. We're it's not true. In control. What we they are in know. control of are our ethics and our integrity and making sure we have verifiable evidence. That's what we as mediums can and should control. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. But I always pray as part of my prayer, please take my own ego out of this. This is not about me. I trust you, spirit, to guide me and to just let me be a, a conduit for you and take my own perceptions, ego. And yet sometimes I go, but why didn't that land or why wasn't that powerful enough? And I've really learned that I've now under, started to understand, okay, now I see why that didn't. It wasn't as powerful. And it was because the person wasn't in the headspace, wasn't ready, and we've rescheduled and then it's gone wonderfully from there and if it doesn't i say spirit for whatever reason it's not time here's a refund like it's not i it is not about me it is am i getting this or am i not getting it and uh i i i've had to be as a perfectionist let go of that it's not about me spirit knows you better than you know yourself spirit knows what you need to hear today and i always start my speech with that just be prepared to be open-minded. Don't panic if the person you wanted to reach is not the first person in. Trust. Just just roll with it. And I always say that spirit tells you what you want, what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want or expect to hear. You've got to be receptive. Um, and if we fight it, it's going to block the connection. So it is, it's, and it, that's, it's a great practice for me as a human too, to, I tattooed trust on my wrist to stop trying to con just this is not about you let go of control it's been a great practice but yeah. it's still it's it's not easy yeah i appreciate all that you shared i appreciate hearing obviously from your sharing what a high degree of ethics you have because i, I think that's so likewise likewise yeah as you understand 
Yeah, there are a lot of people that accuse us of being scam artists. Scam artists don't give money back if it doesn't work. Scam artists don't. I mean, it doesn't matter because those aren't our audience anyway. And I know that the people that work with us see through and know that they're in good hands and know that we're not there. That's not why we, <laughs> that's not what this is about. It's a being of service and we charge because it is our education, our time, our energy. It's an exchange of energy, but um, we do this really truly to help people heal. It's, 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 I know I can, I'm sure that's, you know, kind of the same thing and that it isn't, if I don't do right by you, I, and I will also, and I know you won't either, we're not going to claim Oh yeah, yeah. That that's what it is. If if it's not, if we're not sure, we all, I know that as ethical mediums, we'll say, they'll say, well, it could be this, and I'll go, it could be. I'm I'm not going to take. The, I don't. I'm not going to make that fit, just for my own convenience. It may be. It may not mean that. So I yeah. think that's important too. Like I know that ethics and integrity are of the utmost importance yeah. to us. Yeah, and I love that you share that vocabulary that's important too. It allows the client to kind of see your process yeah. because they're not in, in our process, right. Yeah. Understanding what's happening for us. So when, when you can use words like that, yeah. Yeah. That might sound correct, but I can't, I'm not going to tell you for certain that I'm yeah. not going to fit, even though that seems right. Um, because that does happen too, with little things in session, you can have amazing evidence and then little moments like that where yeah, that seems like the right track, but I'm not going to promise you that's it. So I love that. That That's a good way to know um, that a client is in good hands with you. Yeah, because you're not claiming to be like, no, that's, yeah. trust me, that's right. Like last night, I had a soul with me and I was saying, he's showing me baseball and throwing a baseball. And did he play baseball or did your, you know, husband who was his son? And she's like, no, I mean, my husband really likes sports. I'm like, I said, well, possibly, but I really feel like it's baseball. She's like, I can't take that. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Today she texted me. Turns out his dad did play baseball, you know? <laughs> so it's like, okay. Okay. I was like, I wasn't going to take, but I was like, eh, I really do feel like it's baseball, but maybe, I mean, I don't know. I'm like, but I'm not going to make that fit just to make myself look good. So yeah. I yeah. love that. And thank you so much for sharing um, that too. I think it's important with what we do that people know that we really are genuine. And I know that the people that come to us already know that, but this work is very sacred and it's a sacred responsibility. And it, I love seeing that in other mediums as well. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing. I got chills. So I know spirits here too, but um, sharing your, your beautiful story and your beautiful heart and share Please feel free to share. There will be links below, but where can people reach you to work with you and also share anything you'd like to about what's coming up for you or workshops or anything of that nature that you'd like to share? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And likewise, thank you. Uh, love having these conversations with equally ethical and always learning mediums. That's yeah. a joy to do. So thank you for that. Um, people, you can, anyone can learn more about uh, my mediumship path and mediumship offerings on my website, which is www.natureswayopen.com. Uh, on social media, I'm most active on Facebook, but I am on Instagram, always trying to increase there, and YouTube, and those are all at Nature's Way Open. I share a lot on there um, of moments of connection with my dad as well as just thoughts on the greater reality in general and what it means for all of us, as well as lessons from actual mediumship sessions with clients. Always sharing those with permission, of course, with the client, um, but it's not because, oh, look at this amazing connection. It's really, what can we all learn from this? Because when I share those, they're really powerful lessons that come from these sessions that apply to all of us, like how to deal with grief. There's just all sorts of things. And so I, I find those really beautiful to share. Uh, and so that's where you can learn more about me. And I will add one other piece. Um, I have, I, I reflected back on my own process of growing more connected to the greater reality. And I kind of divided that into a, an eight week it can be more, it's like a self-paced course, if you will, that I really just give away for free because That's I want so nice people, of you. Yeah, I want people to feel 
growth and connecting with self, soul, and spirit. And I really believe that it's possible for everyone in their own way and path. And so I share a workbook on my website as well. It's a free download uh, if anyone is interested in that. It's, it's how to use nature to grow in presence, to connect to self, and then soul, and then eventually spirit. That's beautiful, Amber. That's such a great service yeah. you're providing. Thank you. You're, you're you're just wonderful. And I really appreciate this connection. I appreciate you sharing. And I'm really excited to share this episode. I know it will bring a lot of people a lot of hope and comfort and inspiration. So Amber Kasich, your tops. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me.